our Lord and our Savior, yeah. to the Holy Spirit, who is our seal and guarantee of the redemption of our mortal bodies. Yeah. To my wife Rosalind, the continued room in my gumbo. Yeah. To all of my fellow ministers of the gospel and their spouse. Yeah. To all of our deacons and their spouse. To our awesome music ministry, although you only heard a few of them today, but they're awesome, trust me. Yeah. If you're busy, yeah. then you gotta come back and hear them another time. Yeah. To all of our greeters, to all of our visitors, and to you, the royal family of God, known locally as the McKinney First Baptist Church. We going old school if you hadn't figured that out already. <laughs> Remember back in the day in the woods when the East Coast Church didn't always have good air conditioning. We'd prop up the windows and we'd have the fans going. But guess what? We still worship the Lord. Because He's worthy. We cut some portions of the program out, but I'm not going to not say one thing God gave me to say, but I'm not going to add nothing either. Amen. Oh Lord, that was not too loud of a thing. <laughs> Amen. I just add something just, just, just be all. Now, if you would be so kind, turn in your Bibles. It's the only time I'm gonna ask you to stand. You're not standing for me. We're standing for the reading of the word prior to the proclamation of the word. Luke chapter 19. Verses 1 through 10. Even if you don't have it, even if you're still searching for it, trust me, I'm going to be in it the whole sermon so you get a chance to sit down and find it. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. I will be reading to you from the New King James translation. And the Word of God says the following. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. And he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd. For he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You may be seated. We will use as a thought for today. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Father God, as I come to you this very warm Sunday morning, we thank you right now that you led us to come to the house of prayer in spite of the conditions. We thank you right now that Encore is on site and I believe they're gonna have everything up and running so that we don't have to repeat this anytime soon, but we thank you for those who are here now. Yes, Lord. I believe by faith this is a divine word and an anointed word prepared for those 
who are here now, and we thank God for a media ministry that will record it and so that others who may not have had the opportunity to come will be able to view it later. We thank you right now for you being who you are and pray right now that you would anoint me in your presence. Saturate me in your spirit that with accuracy, clarity, depth, and truth, I may proclaim your word to your people on this day. It is in Jesus' awesome, mighty, and everlasting name that I will always pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 I would say, ushers, you may be seated, but probably you probably already seated. <laughs> you know when God made man, the ultimate purpose for man is to worship God and to enjoy Him forever. God created in the soul of man a empty space that no luxury car, no gated community house, no six or seven figure income job can supersede the need of man to have a personal relationship with God the Son as his Lord and Savior. And with the creation of man, God also gave man something called free will. Because God wants man to accept his effectual call to love him and to accept him for eternal life. The fleeting temptations from the devil to redirect God's mission and plan for our life are so powerful, many, if not most of us, strive to climb up the wrong tree in life for a season of our life. But praise the Lord, Jesus is always, always on a rescue mission. For the souls of all of humanity. So with the text and the Holy Spirit as my guide, I'd like to share with you three object lessons regarding this subject. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Object lesson number one. Those who genuinely seek Jesus always find him. Look back through the text. Verse 1 says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now verse 1 begins with the word then, and it refers to what happened in Luke chapter 18, verses 35 through 43, whereby Jesus, he healed the blind beggar as he was coming near Jericho. The multitudes of people coming to and from Jericho provided the beggar an excellent opportunity for charity. When that blind beggar discovered that one of the travelers was going to be Jesus, he cried out. Matter of fact, they tried to hush him. They tried to say, boy, be quiet over there. But the text reveals that he cried out even more so for Jesus. Matter of fact, he said, Jesus, son of David, his messianic name, have mercy on me. And in Luke 18 and 40, when Jesus heard this blind beggar stand, uh, this blind beggar cry out with such a loud voice, the text said Jesus stood still and commanded the beggar to be brought to him. And when Jesus asked that blind beggar, he asked him, he said, what do you want? The blind beggar didn't say, I need a 20 pound sack of denarii. He, he said he wanted Jesus to show mercy on him by giving him sight. Now what you gotta realize here is that that was a more bold request than asking for a 20 pound bag of denarii. Money, in other words. Why? Because when a person was born blind in that era, they always remained in a state of blindness. Jesus responds to this great example 
example of faith by giving the blind beggar sight. And this miracle begs the question, what seemingly impossible prayer request are you asking Jesus to answer for you? What do you think is so impossible that God can't answer? Now having transformed the life of the blind man, Jesus then encounters a person who is at the exact opposite end of the financial spectrum. Verse 2 says, Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. And he wasn't poor. The text says he was rich. Now since Jericho was a major trade route, the person who held the position of tax collector for that area was in an excellent location to earn a lot of money. Our text confirms that Zacchaeus was not a tax collector. <coughs> Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. Chief tax collector meant he had others that were working for him, <coughs> that were extorting people, that were taking money off the top, that had to pay Zacchaeus for the opportunity to collect taxes in their area, so Zacchaeus was making money off of them, plus where he was situated. So he was rich. Now he's rich, but there's still something missing in Zacchaeus' life. Money can make you temporarily happy, but money does not give you true joy. I'm only having the blessed assurance of knowing that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Only that which is accomplished by the Holy Spirit when you obey Him and take on His heart brings you true joy. Because see, joy is not something man or things can give. Joy is only something that God can give. And if the world didn't give it to you, the world can't take it away. Now look closely at verse 3 and 4. It says, he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd. For he was short of stature. And then verse 4 says, So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. Well, Jesus' reputation has, has grown significant at this point of his earthly ministry. Jesus was attracting record crowds everywhere that he went. Many people were driven by curiosity and other motivations to catch a glimpse of Jesus. And one such person was Zacchaeus, who also had another major challenge. He was short in stature. In other words, he was vertically challenged. So he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus. All right. Now the culture of the near, the ancient Near East reflect that it would have been very unusual and very undignified for a wealthy man, a, as we say in our day, a big ball of Chateau like Zacchaeus to run and climb up a tree. Yet Zacchaeus ran down the street like a little boy following a Christmas parade. You see, curiosity and simplicity are oftentimes God's way of preparing us for faith. Jesus said it like this in Luke 18 and verse 17. Assuredly, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Jesus stands at the door of our heart and he's knocking but we must let him in. 
I'm a living witness that if you seek Jesus with all of your heart, you will always find him. So don't be prideful. Even if you've made mistake after mistake after mistake, don't you dare think Jesus has given up on you. Simply cry out and tell Jesus, I'm coming to your broken. I'm coming to your hurt and confused. I'm coming to you down and out. Father, I stretch out my hand to thee. There's no other help that I know. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says it like this. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. Things which you do not know. So I encourage you today to go get in a quiet place and call on the name of the Lord. Because you need to know this. He who has begun a good work in you is going to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. If you seek Jesus with all your heart, you will always find him. Object lesson number two. This is shout news. No one is too far removed for Jesus to save them. I don't care who you are. There's somebody in your family. Somebody on your street. Somebody you work with. Somebody you pass by on the highway. Somebody that look like right now there is no hope for them. They said, I don't, I don't want anything to do with the church. I don't want nothing to do with Jesus. Just leave me alone. I'm going to go on on my own. But I'm saying to you that even that person, they are not too far removed for Jesus to save them. Look at verse 5. It says, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw it and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down. For today, I must stay at your house. We need to understand it was not because Zacchaeus was first seeking Jesus. It was because Jesus was first seeking Zacchaeus. In John chapter 6 and verse 44, it affirms, No one can come to me, God the Father, unless the Father who sent me draws him. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be a Christian. You don't just wake up one day and say, I'm tired of doing this. I'm going to do it the Christian way. God has been working on you over time. See that this plan. Others have water. Then God anoints one somebody to just share the gospel with you. Then you come to know His heart was prepared. And let me say this, God has some Zacchaeuses all around us. There are hearts that have been prepared to receive this gospel. We just need to avail ourselves to the master, open up our mouths, and go share this gospel. The text says Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. He did not invite Zacchaeus to come to the temple in Jerusalem. See, sometimes we act like the only place somebody is going to get to know Jesus is if they come here. We come here to worship, to be trained and equipped so we can go out there and share the gospel. Jesus goes, uh, did not go, didn't ask uh, uh, Zacchaeus at that time to come to the temple because he knew he needed to meet Zacchaeus right where he was. Amen. See, you can't clean a fish right. until you first catch one. Right. Now, from Jericho to Jerusalem, it was about 15 miles. So I say to you, TMFBC, we need to lay claim to our Jericho. A 15 mile radius of our church, we need to claim in the name of Jesus. We must go tell a dying world that Jesus loves and desires to forgive them. 
that he died on the cross for their sins. But on the third day, he got up, he rose with all power in his hands. The church can never lose the excitement of the fact that the master went to the cross and died for all of our sins. And we must go out and ask our neighbors, how can we pray for them? We can pray for our neighbors by name with a ministry initiative we have at our church called Pray for Every Home. Amen. Now, Amen. asking God is what we need to do is to ask God to begin softening hearts of those who right now are living a ungodly life. Because you can tell them about Jesus until you blew in the face. They're not going to come to the Lord until the Lord opened their eyes spiritually to who Jesus is. Our job is to simply go tell it. And when we go tell it, we ask God to soften their hearts, to prepare their hearts. Now, blind beggars and extortioners did not fit in. They didn't fit in with the good old religious crowd back in Jesus' day. They come up short in Israel's religious society. Church, we do not know who the Holy Spirit is working on. Amen. Spiritual seeds have been planted. Spiritual watering has occurred in people that we may think may never come to Jesus. Amen. There are Muslims. There are homosexuals. There are drug addicts. There are prostitutes. There are undocumented people and good old church folk who God is ready to bring into his kingdom. He just wants us to love them. Go share the gospel with them. Now, most of us in here today don't struggle like Zacchaeus in regards to coming up physically short because we're not short in physical nature. And I pray that none of us are like Zacchaeus and that we don't strive to get ahead in life by deception and by extortion. But like Zacchaeus, in regards to our spiritual walk with Jesus, listen to me carefully, we come up short. So many people in the modern day church help keep so many unsaved people yeah. from joining the church yeah. because they yeah. act like they yeah. so holy. Yeah. They are so righteous. Yeah. They act like they've never sinned. Yeah. They act like they've never had a lust for yeah. They act like they've never said a cuss word. Yeah. They act like they never lied. Now, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, some of you feel that description. Praise the Lord, I wish I was like you. But that's not my story. And I have to admit to you, there's been a time I have come. I have told a lie. I have had a lustful thought. I've been married 29 years and never went the whole, all the way in that direction. But I have looked at a 36, 26, 38. Boy, I hope I cleaned that up good enough to get some 
big piece of chicken today. <laughs> Witness 
and in lifestyle. Because let me tell you something. If your lifestyle don't match what come from here, you ain't listening a whole lot to what come from here. The Lord's unconditional willingness to have fellowship with this tax collector was matched by the immediacy of Zacchaeus who made haste. He hurried and came down from the tree and he received Jesus joyfully. Now typically, some of y'all don't, everybody say amen on this at the same time. Nobody want to know we're talking specifically about you. But typically when somebody is living in sin, living in open rebellion against God, when they hear a spiritually mature person is coming near, they are not running to them like Zacchaeus did, but rather they're running from them or avoid them totally. Oh, no, I can't come around there. <laughs> Verse 7 affirms that there were people who looked down on Jesus' initiative to reach out to someone who needed him. They, they, their complaint demonstrated cultural classification as they criticized Jesus for being a guest of a city. Now, Jesus did not go. Here's the part you can't miss. Jesus didn't go to his house of the then unsaved Zacchaeus to participate in sin with him. Come on now. Man. He didn't go over there and say, Zacchaeus, you got to give me my cut too now. He didn't go over there and participate in sin with him. So don't you say, Pastor. I went to the strip club because I know there's some of them in there need to know about Jesus. Or you all of a sudden decide to go visit some single sister and you a man and you don't have your wife or somebody oh, with you. But I had that See, struggling. See, Jesus didn't go to Zacchaeus' house to participate in seeing women. He came to share the light. To tell him about who he was. When we visit and witness to someone living in sin or struggling with a sinful habit, we are not there to engage in sin with them, nor to merely condemn them either. Or if the church would just learn this. We love to look down on folk that no longer do the very same things we used to do. You just a two-day-old Christian, but now everything sinful to you. Everything, everybody, anything anybody do, all of a sudden it's so close to you now. Now, 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 now we ought to not like sin. Now don't get don't get it twisted either. I'm not, I'm certainly not saying that. But what I'm saying is that God gave you grace and mercy hey. before he calls you out of darkness hey. and to the marvelous light. Why you don't want to give somebody else the same grace and mercy? The same opportunity to come out. Somebody else was praying for you. You need to be praying for them. But you still got to call sin just what it is, sin. But the motivation of pointing out their sin is love, and you'll be led by the Holy Spirit to compassionately witness to them. Now, least I owe you any longer in this heat. Finally, object lesson number three. Don't say amen too loud. I find object lesson number four. Object lesson number three, true repentance leads to conversion and a changed life. All right. When one has a genuine encounter with Jesus, yeah. they will never be the same. Never be the same. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians yeah. chapter 5, verse 17 says it like this. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, yeah. he's what? A new creation. Oh, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The salvation process includes the call for us to confess our sin and then repent and turn from sin. Yeah. 
Yeah. Many will confess sin, but not many will repent from sin. In other words, I'm, I did wrong. I know I did wrong. Lord, forgive me. But then I got plans almost five seconds after I done said it to go back and do it again. That's not repenting. A real prayer need to be, Lord, forgive me of this. You, you fill in the blank of what this is. I ain't going to get you in trouble and all me. Lord, you know I struggle in this area. Lord, if you don't do something, if the Holy Spirit doesn't put a hold on me, you know I'll go back and do it. But I know that's nothing too hard for you. I know you're able to keep me from it. Yeah. And when you pray like that, the master look down on you and say, that's my boy. That's my girl. They want some help for real. Yeah. Then that power of the Holy Spirit will come. Yeah. And he'll give you the strength to overcome it. I can prove it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you. Such is common to man. God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. Because with the temptation, he creates a means of escape that you may be able to find it and get out. The problem is when we're in temptation, we ain't looking for no way out. We're looking how to go further in. And that's why the prayers of the righteous need to show up. Because God will always do his part when you pray that way. He'll always give you a, 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 a flash up. He'll always give you something that will come in your spirit to say, No, nah, don't do that. No, nah, don't look at that. No, nah, don't go there. Now look at closely at verse 8. It says, Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord. I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it fourfold. Right. There was a reality in the speech Zacchaeus made to Jesus, followed by unmistakable proof that Zacchaeus was a new creation. Right. Zacchaeus' pledge to pay back the victims of his corruption stands alongside his commitment to give half of his possessions to the poor. You see, Zacchaeus now has a new master. And it's no longer the God of mammon. It's no longer money. Zacchaeus' experience of the gospel inspired him to be reconciled with those whom he had wronged, and he provided restitution. And he also desired to participate in Jesus' rescue mission. Zacchaeus now has a new desire to change his vocational practices, and this was proof positive that genuine repentance had occurred. Zacchaeus is voluntarily sacrificed his money now to aid the poor instead of extort from the poor. Zacchaeus rose above the minimum requirements of the law. Zacchaeus gave half to the poor. The law stated that he had to, to, for restitution to take place, you had to repay what you took plus one fee. Zacchaeus replaced what he took times four. Zacchaeus' salvation, don't miss this, did not come as a result of him giving gifts to the poor and generously repaying the poor that he cheated. His salvation came as a result of him repenting and accepting Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Just like it is for us. In, in Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It, it, the gift of salvation is the gift of God is not of works, at least anyone should boast. You see, a rich man, a wealthy man, can go to heaven and have eternal life. <coughs> if that one repents of his and her sins and place saving faith in Jesus, the same way a poor person has to do. Yeah. God is no respecter 
of any person. The people thought Zacchaeus was a wealthy man. But actually, he was a bankrupt sinner who needed to receive God's gift of eternal life. You know, so often, especially with our youth and our young adults, they're so enamored with a lot of our, 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 our entertainment stars. And folk that have a whole lot of money, but they do anything to get it. Right. But they're enamored by their flashy cars and their fine silk clothes and, and all of these things. But it's what they had to do to get it that is what, what you have to take close uh, uh, inspection to. Because a lot of people that are being looked upon just like Zacchaeus was because of what he had, as far as what he had externally, was bankrupt internally. Uh, uh, finally, look at those last two verses. It says, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Church, all people are born unsaved. Therefore, all people must be sought and found. God sent Jesus on a rescue mission when Jesus went to Calvary to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. All right. Jesus said to Zacchaeus in verse 9, Today, Today. salvation has come to this house. Mm -hmm. Church, according to John 3.17, God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn it, but the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus declared in John 6.37, all that the Father has given me, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will in no means cast out. Then he goes on to say in John 6 and 39, this is the will of the Father who sent me that all who has, he has given to me, I will lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. Our salvation does not depend on our weak will, but on the mighty and certain will of God and on the keeping power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is not only able to seek and save the lost, but once we are found and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, Jesus is able to keep us eternally secure. You heard quite often quoted once saved, always say it's not that that's not a true statement but I think a more accurate statement is once we are saved we are eternally secure because I can go find that in scripture John 10 28 and 29 Jesus says that all whom the Father has given to me no one can snatch them out of my hand when you are genuinely saved you can never lose your salvation. You can lose some rewards that you, you can get in heaven, but you cannot lose your salvation. If you could lose your salvation, then the devil would have to be as strong or stronger than Jesus. If he saved you, you think he can't keep you? I know he can keep you. Then when Jesus said today, Salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham in verse 9. Jesus does not mean that every member of Zacchaeus' family automatically got saved because Zacchaeus was saved. Right. You, you are not going to heaven on grandma's coattail. Right. You're not going to heaven on daddy's coattail. You will go to heaven based on your personal decision of accepting or rejecting Jesus. But when, when the man of the house, when salvation was extended unto to Zacchaeus, what it did is, is now the whole household comes under the influence of the gospel in that sense that it's set apart from, from the unbelieving world. So one person saved in the house means there's a Holy Spirit working in that person. That means that God, the, the Son and God, the Holy Spirit, dwells in that house. And that one will have impact on others coming to Christ. When he says that the phrase is something that Zacchaeus was a son of Abraham, Jesus is saying that Zacchaeus 
was saved just like Abraham. The text says uh, that Abraham uh, was righteous. How? How was Abraham righteous? Because he believed in God and it was a is for us. When we accept Christ as, as our Lord and Savior, the, God's uh, 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 righteousness is imputed upon us. It's cast upon us. We have His righteousness. That's how God the Father can look down on sinful humanity and see us and, 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 and be able to recognize what we're doing because he doesn't see low down Lewis. He see Lewis through the, 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 the Holy Spirit. He see me through the faithfulness of Christ Jesus. Amen. He sees you in the same way. Amen. Perhaps you came to church today without much of an awareness of salvation. Like Zacchaeus, maybe you were curious. Maybe some, especially those who visitors coming in, you may have heard about TMFBC was a friendly and welcoming church. And we are. You may have heard that our choirs are awesome. Although you only got a little bit of the praise team today, trust me, they are. You may have heard that our sermons are text-driven. Well, you'll be able to answer that right now. And so you came. But now you realize that you are a sinner. And the Lord Jesus is calling you to come down from your sycamore tree where you've been perched and watching the parade. Wow. Jesus wants to come and stay at your house. Right. The master's rescue mission is to seek and to save the lost. If you will respond to his call with repentance, you will hear Jesus pronounce to you, today, salvation has come to this house. Today, you can be saved. Today, your name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Today, you can have eternal joy. And I pray that each one of us who is saved will ask Jesus to use you regarding Jesus' rescue mission. Let us pray. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus the Christ, Lord, you've allowed us to make it through a very warm, if not hot, worship day. But we thank you, Lord, that you didn't tell us to pack up and leave. Thank you, Lord, that this Holy Spirit is in this warm place like it is when it's cool in the worship center. We thank you, Father, that we know you can move in a message here like you move in a message there. I pray, Father, if there be any who are like Zacchaeus that have been climbing up the wrong tree, that you would speak to their heart, mind, and soul, and that they will come down from chasing after the world, come down from chasing money, come down from chasing women, come down from chasing any other sinful habit, and allow you to be Lord in their life. Because I know if you're not Lord of all, you're not Lord at all. We love you, we thank you, and praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.